Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Games of Scratch, and how are things going for you today? If the answer is awesome, well, maybe you are just like super awesome, who are having an awesome day, because they were just acquired by Epic Games, and I'm going to use awesome a lot because, well, that's the name of the company. Super Awesomes is now an Epic Game company. So here we are on their website. Their website is predictably enough called superawesome.com, which I got to admit is actually kind of a cool URL. So the question is, what the heck are super awesome and why did Epic Games just acquire them? And that is what we are going to look at today. So first, we're going to get into the press release and got a bit of a rundown here. So we started super awesome in 2013 with the mission to make the internet safer for kids or probably more accurately to profit from making the internet safer for kids. But hey, Hey, not going to judge. Uh, the key to achieving that kind of impact has always been scale. The bigger we are, the, our, the more our products are adopted, the more that children are engaging with safer digital environments. Uh, they had a number of people invest in them, uh, and then uh, they had to sit down, and they decided they needed to get bigger. Part of that getting bigger is they were in Cary, North Carolina for a meeting, and lot of yada, yada, yada. That ended up with Epic Games acquiring them. So yes, Epic Games has acquired uh, Super Awesome. So Tim Sweeney and his team understand the importance of responsibly engaging with kids and parents. They're also incredibly serious about privacy. It's a set of values that instantly came apparent when Tim and I began discussing a partnership. Joining Epic means many things. It means continued and indeed greater support for our customers, developers, content owners, and brands who want to do more for kids. It means continued investment in kid tech solutions to help uh, the overall ecosystem. Ultimately and crucially, it is a step change in making the internet safer for kids. We have always been proud of our mission. We are even prouder to do it with a principles-driven company like Epic Games. Uh, there is an additional uh, press release over on Business Wire that they link you to. Um, I kind of got a little bit more of a rundown of what super awesome kids actually do. They make super awesome kids web services or KWS. We'll get back to the details on that in a bit, but it is a platform for consent management toolkit that makes it easier for developers to build great experiences for users of all ages. Uh, their products uh, and services are GDPR compliant and have been certified through the KidSafe and ESRB COPA Safe Harbor programs. With awesome ads, developers can offer kids safe monetization inside of their products. And tr trusted by 300 brands and including Lego, NBC Universal, and Hasbro, Go Joe, uh, to power safe digital engagement for more than half of a, what is that? Billion, yeah, half a billion kids every month across thousands of apps, games, and services. Super Awesome remains committed to supporting existing customers and will partner with Epic Games to further their mission. From Tim Sweeney, we hear more kids interact online than ever before, and now is the time to double down on their safety. Super Awesome is the company developers want to work with to make better online content for kids. We share the belief that digital experiences are better when you go the extra mile to respect privacy, and we are thrilled to invest in the future alongside the talented Super Awesome team. So that, in a nutshell, is that they have acquired super awesome and yeah so we're going to go into a little bit of a breakdown of what exactly some of these things are because the words like i imagine every single one of you knows what the gdp are is at this point in time because you have to click that little yes allow cookies on this website thing that is from the gdpr it is a uh, child protection system and where you probably, there are two things that Super Awesome really provide. Uh, first off is ads that can be targeted at kids. This is actually a pretty big deal because uh, companies such as YouTube and Google have gotten smacked down. You can't really target kids without actually having permission to do so. So you can't do something like set a cookie on and if you know that the person you are talking to is 13 years or younger, depending on what country they are in, you can't actually target them with ads. So this is... It allows you to do so with a permission-based system. So the ad's definitely a big thing here, but the big one here probably and the reason why they acquired them and where most developers would use this is KWS or the Kids Web Services. And what they've essentially done is built uh, an online web service. That means your application can call over the internet to them. And what it is essentially is um, a consent platform. Now, consent is a big part of this. For something like COPPA or the Children Online Protection, something, something, uh, the COPPA requires that you have permission from a parent before you can hold data on a child. So, for example, if you want to even know the child's name or you want to have a profile pic for them or whatever, you have to get permission from the parent. And it's draconic in the way that it works. Basically, it's you have to have written permission or a fax. It's it's kind of, a, it's a 1998 law, and it kind of shows that it didn't understand what the internet is all about. That's one of the downsides to letting, you know, think of the children legal legislation happen for people that don't know how to use a computer, especially when computers are in the early stages of being networked at that point 
point in time. So that is sort of where Super Awesome comes in. It is about providing consent. So basically, it is easing the friction for parents to go in and give consent that your children can interact with your product. Um, so we go into a little bit more details. There are a couple of laws at play here. The big one here is the Child Online Protect Privacy Protection app. Now, this may not have affected you, but me as a creator on YouTube, oh, we got hit hard with this one. Basically, YouTube got caught collecting data on kids under 13. So instead of, you know, I don't know, fixing their own problem, they instead dumped it off on us creators. So every time I make a new video, I have to specifically flag this as not targeting children. And in fact, some creators were actually straight out having to start swearing in their videos, make it so it obviously wasn't for kids. So if you did something like uh, toys, you know, a lot of people are toy collectors for adults. So there's a, a you know, uh, a community around that. But according to the algorithms, everyone just kind of assumed, oh, this is aimed at kids and was demonetizing everything because of this copper ruling. So what they started doing is swearing in their videos, which, you know, I guess it works. Uh, so anyways, COPPA is really being enforced now. And we're talking like $50,000 plus dollar fine per violation. So this is not a trivial thing. And don't think that if you're not in the United States, COPPA doesn't apply to you. Yeah, that ain't the way it works. On top of that, there is also the the general data protection uh, regulation. This is the privacy law from Europe went into effect about a year or two ago. And now whenever you get cookies from a website, you always get that little pop-up giving you permission. That is to be GDPR um, compliant. Basically, you got to uh, inform people of the information you are tracking on them. And then finally, we have the personal information security standard in China. And what they're doing with the KWS is making it so there's a a system in place where you can get approval from parents so you can start grabbing that kind of information. So what is that information? Well, here's got a bit of a breakdown. Personal information as defined by COPPA and GDPR includes things like uh, obviously name, address, etc. But you also got geolocation, IP address, user generated text, uh, their videos, persistent IDs. So that would be like cookies or tracking cookies and stuff like that. Um, and, and a lot of those things sound really kind of is scary, but truth of the matter is, if you have an online account that's persistent, you got to have all kinds of these things. So if you have like a Fortnite character, well, to track that Fortnite character to actually be you, there has to be some persistent data being tracked. And in order to track that data from kids, well, you got to be in compliance with COPPA and such. So I can understand, it, especially uh, where they come in here. And here are the current ways of validating, and and so a lot of this basically boils down to they have created this large archive of where parents can go in and give their permission. And then once they've given permission once, you can get more and more permission easily. So, oh yeah, add that, add that, add that, add that, add that. So it's this database of permissive features. So once you've got permission, it, it, depending on what permissions they give you, it gives you a whole lot more options. And then funny thing here is because of our network of verified parents is growing every day, recruits the requirement for your new users to go through, it means up to four times easier on similar platforms. So basically, once a parent has got in and given permission, uh, it's a lot easier to get them to do permission and, and again. And this actually boils down into the past too. It's, it's kind of like if you've registered your credit card with a site, your options of making a purchase at that site again goes up to something like 900 fold. This is just one of those things. Like people are really hesitant to create an initial account or uh, initially put information in, but once they've already done it, hey, they're all in. Uh, so you can see some of the key features. You can verify parental consent, kid accounts, and authentication. So you can have a separate uh, compliant child accounts with a single sign-on, verified parental network, uh, customizable consent workflows, easy API creation integration. So that means for you on your end as your application trying to call their services, um, your own uh, branded parental portal where people could come in and give permissions, geo adaptive compliance, and fully COPPA and G GDPRK compliant. So that is the key things. So basically, once you've gone through something like this, you know, if you've got the little kitty breaking out the credit card, uh, or your credit card specifically for Fortnite, it may not technically be legal. So normally what's happening is those kids are playing on their parents' accounts, which may also not be ideal. So what you're having here is a system where a kid could log in. And the parent has already given permissions for the kid to, you know, be tracked to a certain degree and to use the services. And then, you know, you have uh, more transparency for kids using their parents' credit cards for things like Fortnite's in-app purchases. So it does make a ton of sense here. Uh, be interested to see how this acquisition goes. I can understand why it's Epic Games too. They, they make a developer tool. I can see them integrating this as an SDK there. Uh, they make an online store, which has to be compliant with GDPR and COPA, et cetera. And they're part of the developer ecosystem.
And you know what? I do buy into the ethics-based thing. You know, a lot of people think there's no altruism at Epic Games, like the Apple versus uh, Epic. They think it's just a profit-driven thing. I actually honestly think that Tim Sweeney is a highly moral-driven person. You may not agree with his morals, but those are driving things more than shareholder earnings, etc. So I actually do buy that. I also think that's part of why a team like Super Awesome would join Epic Games. But I'm interested to hear your opinion on this. First, the whole segment of, you know, adult consent for their children and would you use a tool like this me as a creator this COPPA stuff really hits me hard and if I could actually have a one sign off that basically you know everybody here has permission or, or otherwise it would make my life a lot easier so if this kind of thing grows and I can see it growing because you're going to need to have these authentications more and more often in the future could be a good purchase by Epic but I'm wondering what you think about this acquisition about Super Awesome's products KWS specifically and I guess I'm asking you to future you know crystal ball it to where you think this is going to go and you think this is going to be a huge thing or eh? let me know comments down below and I'll talk to you all later goodbye